Hey guys, this is Bridget from the DeVay Homestead. Welcome back. Today I'm going to do a tutorial on how to make roses and how to make leaves to go with your roses. I'm going to teach you all about the different loom sizes and gauges and how that will affect your rose and how to make smaller roses or larger roses or thick roses and the same with leaves. How to make different ones. So I hope you guys enjoy this tutorial. Let's get started. So let's get started talking about how we're going to achieve the size of our leaves and our roses. So the first thing we want to look at is our gauge size on our loom. Just like any hat or any project you're working with, your gauge, which is the, the measurement between the beginning, the middle of this peg, and the middle of this peg is your gauge. This is a 3 8 gauge loom. This is a 5 8 gauge loom. And this is just your standard 36 peg loom from the 36, from the basic loom set. So just like anything you're using, you would use the yarn that is appropriate for the size gauge you're using. So if you're using a 3 8 inch gauge, which is a really small gauge, you would use one strand of your number four yarn. And I have some examples of that I'll show you in a second. When you have your 5 8 gauge, that's a chunkier yarn. So you're either going to use two strands of number four, or one strand of number five, or one strand of number six. When we move up to something like a basic 36 peg loom, same thing as a 5 8 so you're going to use two strands of a number four, one strand of a number five, or a number six. So that's going to make a difference in what your roses look like and your leaves. So let's look at a rose first. So as you can see this one, I used a very thin yarn and it's, it's frilly and it's smaller as far as the details are smaller compared to a chunky yarn like this. So you'll see here in a minute when I show you how to do the rows, your rows is going to be like this big curly cue that you're going to roll up and sew together to make the rows. So depending on how many rows you do in your pattern is going to be how much you have to keep rolling up. And let me show you a difference between this one and this one. So these two, let me zoom in a little bit here. So these two roses were both done on the 3 8 inch loom. They were both done in a number four worsted weight yarn, the same type of yarn, same brand. The only difference is in this red rose, I went for 56 rows, and for the small pink rose, I only did 26 rows. So when I had my curly cue to roll up, I only had enough to roll up here, whereas with the 56 rows, I could make it bigger. So I made the smaller one that I'm going to put on a little baby hat, and I made the bigger one that I'm going to use on a different project. So you can make the different sizes as far as how big you want the rows this way, depending on how many rows you make when you are doing the rows, which you'll see here when we get to the rows tutorial. You can also, as you'll see when we are curling up the rows when we're sewing it together, you can make your rows tighter or not as tight. So this one is not curled up as tight. I have it a little looser and wider depending on the effect you want. Okay, so then these two roses are both made with a number five chunky yarn, except this one was done on the 5 8 loom and the other one was done on the 36 peg loom and even though these are both number five chunky yarn 
depending on the brand, of course, it's going to make it different. So not only did I use this on two different size looms, but the yarn was a little bit different, but it's still the same amount of rows. This one, I also curled up tighter, and this one, I did it a little looser. So it's really neat how just with the one pattern, you can just change it up and get all these different roses. So the same thing is going to happen when we do our leaves. So this leaf was done, all the leaves I'm about to show you are done in the exact same amount of rows, same pattern, starting off with five casted on pegs that you'll see here in the tutorial. This one was done on the 3 8 inch loom with one strand of worsted weight yarn. These two were done on the 5 8 peg loom, two strands of a number four worsted weight yarn. For the one on the right, since I was using two strands, I did one strand of dark and one strand of light just to get the variation in the color just so it kind of looks like a leaf and I really like the way that looks or you can use a solid color. Then this one is a number six chunky yarn and I did this one on my 36 peg loom. I do not have a green that I liked in a number five chunky yarn just because solid green is kind of hard to find, especially in the shade you like. But you can see the difference, the same exact pattern, same exact amount of rows, same exact everything, except I used a different size yarn, a number four versus a number six, three eighths inch gauge, and a regular basic 36 peg loom, which I believe is three fourths of an inch. So you can see just changing that up and then you can match what size you want. So this one matches really well with this one, whereas that might look a little funny. Same thing here, if I had this big giant rose and I had a little petal, it doesn't look bad, but it might not be the effect I'm going for. So you can play around with the sizes and match up and see what you want but you can make these beautiful roses in any color. You can use a multicolor yarn. This one just has a little variation in color. You could also use um, a variegated yarn or a solid yarn. So let's get started. To do our rows, we're going to be using three pegs for my basic 36 peg loom. The yarn I'm going to be using today is a Serenity Chunky and I'm going to start off by making a long tail. The reason why you want a long tail is because you're going to use your tail to sew the petals, the flower, to itself and to use it to sew the rose to whatever you're going to be using. So get a long tail and we're going to make a slip knot. And we're going to put it on one, two, three, peg three. So I'm going to number them like that for you so you can see which ones I'm using. So I'm going to start out by doing my cast on. So I'm going to cast on by double E wrap method. So I'm going to double E wrap, peg two, knit off, and then cast on peg one. Now I'm going to do one more thing to get started before I start my rows. And that's I'm going to take my working yarn and I'm going to come in, in front of peg one like a U-wrap and I'm going to do that twice. Now I have three loops on my peg. I'm going to take just the bottom loop and I'm going to pull it up over the two loops at the top but I'm going to leave those on my peg. So I'm going to take the bottom one, bring it up and over, and I should have two loops left on my peg. So now I'm ready to start my rows. And I'm always going to have 
two loops on this peg and you'll see what's going to happen on this peg. This is the side that's going to make the rows curl up and on this side is the area that's going to make the frilliness of the edge of the rows and you'll see that as we go. So to get started what we're going to be doing is working to the right and then back to the left. So when we work to the right the first thing we're going to do is we're going to e-wrap peg 2, peg 3, and knit off. I'm going to take this starting yarn and pull it inside and let that hang. Now to finish off row 1, when we get to peg 3, we're going to take our working yarn and we're going to come in front of the peg and we're going to U-wrap the peg so it's like a half wrap on the peg and we want to do it gentle so we don't want to pull so hard that we make this spin around the peg okay and we're going to knit over one time and then we're going to U-wrap and knit off a second time and then we're going to U-wrap and knit off a third time and that is row one and we're going to do it a bunch of times so if you didn't get it just keep watching I'm going to do it a bunch of times for you guys so now row two so we're going back to the left we're going to take our working yarn and we're going to come in front of this peg three kinda in sort of a u-wrap or a flat stitch whatever you want to call it in your notes but you're coming in front of the peg but then you're going to go behind and e-wrap peg 2 peg 1 I'm going to knit off peg 3 peg 2 and when I get to peg 1 I'm just going to take the bottom loop and move it over the top two loops keeping two loops on my peg so there was row 1 and that was row two. So we are just going to repeat that however many times we want to get the length we want to curl up our rows like I was telling you before. So for this one we're going to do 22 rows for this flower. So we're going to go back and forth 11 times. So we've done row one and then row two, so let's keep repeating those rows. So E wrap, E wrap, knit off. Now to complete this row, U wrap one, two, and three. Now coming back on row 4 in front of this peg like a U-wrap or a flat knit then we're going to E-wrap, E-wrap, knit off 3, 2, and this one just the bottom one over the top two. So there's rows 3 and 4. Row 5, E-wrap, E-wrap, knit off. one, two, three. Now coming back we're going to wrap, e-wrap, e-wrap, knit over, knit over, take the bottom over the top. And you're just going to keep repeating this till you get 22 rows or the length you want.
So I'm down to my last row. So I finished my 22 rows and now I'm ready for my bind off. To do my bind off, I'm going to take the one peg with two loops and I'm going to knit over. Then I'm going to start my bind off by moving in this direction. I'm going to e-wrap peg two, knit over. I'm going to take the loop on peg two and move it to peg one. Gently pull my working yarn, knit over going to move the loop on peg two, not peg one to peg two. Now I'm going to e-wrap peg three. Knit over. Move the loop on peg three to peg two. Gently pull your working yarn knit over and now I'm going to cut it and again I'm going to leave a long tail for the same reason as we left the long tail in the beginning and I'm going to take that tail and bring it like we're making a purl stitch except pull it all the way through take your rows off the loom and tighten it up so now you have this cute little curly cue. What we did on this side is what's making it want to curl in like this. And what we did on the right side, peg three, gives us that really pretty chain across here that's going to give us the frill at the end of our rows. So now we are going to curl up our rows like this and I'm going to show you here in a second but I just want to talk for a second. So when you curl it up you can curl it to where you curl it kind of flat like that and loose or you can really spin this around super tight and make it the petals really really close together like that so if you can kind of see the difference so it's just a really a preference of how you want your rows if you want it you know really spiraled up or if you want it more flat or however you want it so what we're going to do is we're going to take this in right here and we're going to put it onto our yarn needle Now we're ready to start stitching our rows together. So again, so you can see here, I'm going to pull this corner around and figure out how tight do I want it. So I want it about right there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my yarn needle and I'm just going to push this in right where I want that. And as you could see, now it is connected to this part right here. So I'm connecting this underneath part to here is what I'm going to do now. So I'm just going to start spinning my rows and I'm going to come up through here through this part, grab a back loop from the bottom of the one that's curled here and pull it through. So then I'm just going to go through the loops here on this part and then come up through the loop at the bottom of this part just connecting it and as I go through just making sure 
I've got it where I want it. If I want it curled more, then I'll pull it back this way. If I want it less, and just kind of work it as you go around. So I'm going to go in about two loops or so here. Grab a back loop here and pull it through. So I think you have the idea, so I'm just going to keep doing that. Keep checking that it's where I want and it's nice and secure. Okay, I'm coming to the end here. So I'm going to grab through here one more time through this back loop. And then I'm going to turn it around. I'm going to leave in my in. Make a knot to secure it. Weave it in some more. And then I'm not going to cut this off right here because I am going to wait till I secure this to my project. So I'm going to leave that there. If I don't need it, then I can always cut it off. But right now I'm going to need it. So I'm going to take that off my yarn needle. And now I want to do the other end. And I'll show you what we're going to do with that. So now I'm going to take the other end and put that on a yarn needle. And so what I want to do is this little part is just kind of hanging there. And I want to pull it in and attach it right about here so that it will bring in that petal nice and finished off. So I'm just going to find... I'll turn it over. I can do it this way. Just like this and pull and so it's just going to bring that down and make it kind of seamless right there. Then I'm going to do the same thing I did before and I'm going to weave my end, make a knot, Weave it in some more. And then I can take that off my yarn needle. And just like before, I'm going to leave those tails because I can use those to attach my flower to my project. If not, I've already got them weaved in and I can cut them off. And there you have it. We have the rose. So to make my leaf, I'm going to be using today my 5 8 inch gauge loom and I'm going to be using 5 pegs from my loom. I went ahead and marked on either side of my 5 pegs just to give me a visual of which 5 pegs I'm going to be using. I'm also using this number 4 worsted weight yarn, so I'm using 2 strands together and this is a red heart soft yarn going to leave a generous tail just like always because we're going to use the tail to secure our leaf to our project or to our rose or whatever we're doing. So I'm going to take my slip knot and I'm going to place it on peg 5 and secure. 
To do my cast on, I'm going to do the double E wrap method. And I'm going to do that for pegs four through one. Now our cast on is complete, we're ready to start row one. So row one and all our rows in this pattern that are going this way are going to be our knit rows and all our rows going this way are going to be our purl rows but there's some um, little things you need to know that I'm going to explain as we go through this. The first thing you want to know is anytime we are moving in a direction we're always going to skip the first peg and that's going to give us the nice pretty crocheted looking sides on the end of our leaf and we're always going to knit the last peg in the row so if we were going this way and then we coming back this way you'll see we're going to skip the first one in our purl row but we're going to knit the end one so let's just get to it and you'll see how this goes. So starting our row one, we're going to skip the first peg and we're going to e-wrap and knit off pegs two through five. After I knit off peg five, I can take my starting yarn and pull it to the inside of my loom. Now coming back in this direction is going to be our purl row. So we're going to skip that first peg to get those nice pretty sides and we're going to purl peg four, peg three, peg two and then when we get to the end of a purl row we're going to knit and we're just going to do a u-wrap knit and that's going to give us that pretty edge so now you are just going to repeat this till you get six rows so I did row one then I did row two so we're going to go all the way till we get six rows doing the same thing. So this is row three and I'm knitting off all but the first. Coming back, row four. Skipping the first one, purl the next three. And then a U-wrap knit on the end. Now row five. Knit all but the first one. Coming back, skip the first one, purl three, and you wrap knit the last one. So now we have six rows we're on to row seven. Row seven is going to be a decrease row. So we're gonna take the second to last peg and we're going to move it over to the right. Then we're going to take the last peg and move it over to the right. And gently pull our working yarn. Now we're going to e-wrap and knit the last three pegs in the row always skipping that first one 
And on this peg, we're going to take two at the bottom and bring it over the one at the top and knit off. Going back in this direction is also going to be a decrease. So we're going to take the second to last loop in the row and move it over a peg to your left. Take the last loop, move it over a peg, gently pull your working yarn. Now this is a purl row, so we are going to purl the middle peg, bringing our hook under those two loops. And then you wrap and knit always our last peg in the row. Now this row is just a knit row without a decrease, so we're moving along right. So we're going to knit these two knit off, coming back this way, going to purl the center one, e-wrap knit the last. Now we're moving back to a decrease. We're heading in that direction, so we're going to take the second to last loop, which is our middle loop, and we're going to move it over to the right. Then we're going to take our last loop, move it over to the right, gently pull our working yarn. We're still moving in that direction for our knit row, so we're going to knit this peg, take the two at the bottom, knit off the top. Now we're moving in this direction, so we're going to take this loop and we're going to move it over to the left. Gently pull your working yarn, knit over. Now I'm going to cut off my yarn. I'm going to bring it to the front just like I did on the rows. I'm going to do what looks like a purl stitch, but then I'm going to pull it all the way through. Take my leaf off of the loom and pull the end tight and there we have our little leaf. This leaf is the same exact pattern as my inner pink ear on my unicorn pattern. So it's on my channel and I'll put the link below but the unicorn has a, a pink inner ear and this is the same size. So if you wanted this leaf bigger you can use the pattern I have on the unicorn for the outer white ear and it will be a little bit bigger or you can adjust adding rows however you'd like. So now we're going to take this point and we're going to put that onto a yarn needle. And we're going to weave the end back all the way to the start because that's where it's going to attach to the project. So we're just going to weave that out of the way and take it off your yarn needle and again I'm just going to leave that right now. I'm not going to cut it right now just because I might need it when I am attaching it. So there we have a leaf. And there you have it. Once you have your roses and your leaves, you can connect them to any project you have. If you didn't want the leaves, you could use just the rose and connect it to hats or anything. So when I connect them, you can either attach the leaf first and then attach the rose. That's usually what I do to keep it nice and secure. Or you can attach the leaf to the rose and then connect it to your project. So I'm going to connect this one. I'm going to make a beautiful baby blanket and matching hat. And then you can also attach them to like the end of a scarf or any project you want. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Thank you guys for watching. Bye!